Hey friends, I want to talk about the work of David Allen Peters, which is my favorite paintings on view in New York City right now at the Miles McHenry Gallery. David Allen Peters carves his paintings. So he begins by painting acrylic paint in dozens and dozens and dozens of layers. I've heard up to a hundred layers. By the way, this video was produced by Eric Min Swinson in 2017. I will link it above and in the description below. Watch it in its entirety, if not just for its cool soundtrack. So when that fat chunk of paint is dry, he then chalks a geometric pattern and then use what's known as a lino cut knife to carve within those shapes, revealing the, the rainbow strata of the paint layers below it. I think, I think one of the most fun parts of the painting is what the gallery's website does not show you, and that is a photograph from the side, so you can see the full strata of paint layers. But honestly, I think the, the biggest secret about viewing the work is the difference between seeing it from far away and seeing it from up close. Not only are there more colors than you thought there were, but every single color is significantly brighter with every step you get closer. The reason this is happening just, just gives me a really good excuse to kind of dip into slightly the three-dimensionality of color theory. I know it sounds boring. This is the level of crushing disappointment I felt like in second grade. It's, it's when they tell you that red and yellow makes orange, and red and blue makes purple, but all you can do is produce a really crappy, ugly version of it. The reason this is happening is because they were lying to you in elementary school. Let me explain. This is the color wheel, and you're told that there's three primary colors, and if you mix any of those two primary colors, you get the secondary colors of green, purple, you know what I'm talking about. But if you mix any opposite colors, let's say yellow and purple, you get this really gross brown in the middle. So that is 50-50 yellow and purple, but this is 75% yellow and 25% purple. All to say that the color wheel is actually a color disc, and when you're mixing color, this is the most important part, you can only mix in straight lines. So yellow plus red equals crappy orange. Never full saturation pretty orange. You can never achieve full saturation orange or purple or green with the primary colors. It's why art stores sell all of the colors of paint, because you have to literally go buy full saturation orange if you want full saturation orange. Anyway, when it comes to the experience of David Allen Peter's paintings, from a distance your eye is optically mixing a variety of colors, which not only produces a new color, but it always produces a duller, grosser version of that color. That's why they're so muted from a distance, and then surprisingly explode with brightness and color w when you get closer. By the way, it's also why your printer cartridges are cyan, magenta, and yellow because on the color wheel, magenta is located here and cyan is located here, way outside the known universe of the color wheel. So, so when mixing on straight lines in the color wheel, not only can you achieve the primary colors of red, blue, and yellow, but you can also touch full saturation purple and full saturation green and probably orange. I just drew this wonky. David Allen Peters is on view at the Miles McHenry Gallery in New York City through July 6th. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in a week. I am aware that I flail my hands quite a bit in my video explanations, and so I don't know if you caught this band-aid on my thumb here. It is, in fact, the result of this very tool, the Lino Cut knife. And the reason I went out and bought it in the first place is because in the press release for the show, uh, the artist and gallery mentioned specifically that he uses this tool, the lino cut knife. And listen, maybe it's just the best tool he's found for the job, rather than a, a wood carving tool or a ceramic carving tool or an electric Dremel carving device. W what's interesting to me is that they, they mention it specifically. So why mention this specific tool? Here's my theory while I show you some footage of me playing around with it. I didn't cut myself in this footage, so don't worry. Anyway, a lino cut knife has one single function. It is a unitasker. It is only used for cutting a linoleum block. 
aka a super fancy stamp. So here's a very small linoleum block that I'm going to play around with, kind of in the style of David Allen Peters, so I can learn about the process. Now normally when I'm doing this, I am drinking alcohol and listening to music. In this case, there was no alcohol and no music, so I could have full concentration on keeping my fingers out of the path of that blade. I was safe the whole time, got through the whole thing without hurting myself, and then five minutes before shooting this video, I was walking into this room, dropped this tool, with my right hand, tried to catch it with my left hand, and I missed, and it gouged me twice in the thumb. So, anyway, you'll also see me using something he does not, which is a hair dryer. When you're actually carving a linoleum block, you need to warm it so that it's easier to carve. My point in telling you any of this is that Jackson Pollock used a brush. Now, he did not use it traditionally, it never touched the canvas, but his device to splatter paint was a brush and, and it's important for him that you know that, so it's still attached to this tradition of painting. And I think it's important for David Allen Peters that you know he's using this specific tool for two reasons. One, he's reversed its function. It's a tool that's only ever been used to erase, to remove areas of a print so that you don't see them. And he's used it not just to reveal but to, but to show more colors. And second, just by revealing his material, he's added a layer to these paintings. He's using the material of paint with the effect of sculpture and the tools of printmaking, creating this kind of intellectual trifecta of mediums in art, which I think is just another thing that's interesting. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in a week.